legs. Yeah, goes inward and slide upwards. Keep rolling the ankles inward and then slide. Namaste. Welcome. For today, let me discuss the feet, the ankles, and all the anatomical component of this part of our body in the practice of the Kandasana. So, um, a more important um, aspect of this practice would have to be the alignment of the hips, um, the breath. I've given an intensive tutorials about those elements. So I really suggest that you um, watch them, study them, so you learn this complex asana from the many angles, so from the hips, the breath, the feet, and the movement, because you have to combine them all together beautifully so you practice it safely. And not just learn this from one component or element. And this is really a complex asana. Of course, definitely, if you have any limitations or injuries down the feet, low back, the knees, this tutorial is not for you. All right, um, the feet um, would have to be very flexible as well, especially this part of the ankles. And if, for example, some components of feet flexibility are lacking, uh, for example, this one, um, if you cannot um, uncurl your feet all at once to rise in an upward dog, <laughs> Um, it might be too soon for you to learn this one, so work progressively. So for example, um, if you're following a system and if you're flowing and then you're doing this because you're not confident of um, uncurling your feet and ankles all at once, I recommend you don't practice Kandasana first and because the flexibility of the ankles and the feet would have to be developed organically. Right. Time and time again, if um, you're able now to lightly uncurl the toes and back to downward dog. For example, this one, some systems of yoga follow this. All right, if you're flowing, that should be light already in the practice. All right, other elements which will help you promote flexibility of the ankles are those which you bind your legs, such as the Padmasana, this one. So this one should be feeling light already. All right, there should be no pain in the knees. There should be no pain around this part of the feet and the ankles. So uh, what else? Um, positions where the tops of the feet are flat, like the um, Virasana on the rock position, where you can even set your hips between your feet, and then you lie down flat on your back like the Sipta Vajrasana or Virasana. All right, now many, many uh, elements, definitely if you follow a system of progression, and they would have to be tackled first before you try the Kandasana. All right, so let's go straight to the tutorial. All right, so you just don't turn the ankle and rotate it like that, yeah? No, you just don't do that. So the, the action of your feet, the ankles, would have to spiral upwards as you bend at the outer edges of the ankle. So there's a huge difference between just turning the ankle and then moving this side of the ankle long and then throw it upwards. Together, of course, with the rest of the lower limbs and the hips going to that direction. So it's like scooping downwards and spiraling upwards as everything rotates to the center line, like an inward spiral and lifting up action, such as this. Like that. So you should be able to feel um, the openness of this part of the ankle. No pressure there, no pain. All right, and then this side as well. All right, you will notice one side is more flexible. All right, um, definitely uh, all those blockages will um, be present. Um, but as you work this element, make sure. All right, the blockages are part of our system, but they should not cause pain. All right, pain is a sign of uh, unreadiness, so back off. Yeah, pain is not good. Some discomforts are necessary, but no pain. All right, so um, how do we do that now? The position of the Kandasana. All right, so from here, so you don't want now another pitfall is this. You can lift like that in an attempt to roll it inward. No. Why? Because if you lift your thighs, the low back absorbs the pressure. And the low back will suddenly just stop under and that's not good for the health of your lumbar spine. Uh, Kandasana is a really deflection. You know? It could cause serious injury, especially in the low back, if you do it 
um, improperly. So you have to maintain the length of your spine towards the neutral angle. All right. So the rotation actually happens all right, while you are still down the ground. So you don't lose the length and the integrity of the absent lower spine. All right, such as this. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't lift for the sake of your creating mobility. All right. So you want to keep the spine open. All right. I will do it one at a time. So you have a structural um, image of how this is done. All right. So it goes inward and slide upwards. Yeah. It goes inward and slide upwards. All right. So from there, you're going to do the action all at once. Yeah. And with the breath, of course. The breath leads. Inhale to draw up. Exhale. All right. Breathing in. Inward, upwards. Yeah. Keep rolling the ankles inward and then slide the outer edges of the ankles upward. You are spiraling them in. In and up. In and up. You just don't turn them. You have to move the outer edges of the ankles nice and long. All right, and then you might do some adjustment you know, if you feel any blockages. My right, my left side is so open, you know, that if you notice my feet are not perfectly aligned. No worries, as long as the inside of the body feels light, the hips feel light, you're doing fine. Right. Blockages will always be part of our nature. Mm. Good to know your tight spots. So you can adapt. But definitely, if you need to adjust, for example, one side of you is going to lose, release a bit. All right. And even in here, all right, as the hips open, the feet will have their tendency to rotate um, internally uh, too deep. So you have to counter that rotation of the ankles by slightly drawing yeah, the outer edges of your feet upwards towards the midline and with the breath lift everything upwards. Yes, can that's now. Right. And then the release is the same. You just don't bounce the feet externally. Rather scoop everything in you may use the hands to do the work of lifting the feet upwards yeah. and you release your feet down the ground. All right. Yes. Roll them in, throw it upwards. The knees, the knees, they don't play that much important role in the Kandasana. The knees actually feel as passive as possible and yeah, there's no rotation happening here our knees are not very efficient rotating so don't force it through the knees rather the action should be coming down from the hips and the ankles and the feet and of course the breath and your energy locks supporting you all throughout the process from the entry holding and exiting this beautiful position until the next one master